In this video, we are going to talk about chromosomal recombination or chromosomal crossover, a process that occurs during meiosis. And meiosis is of course the process by which haploid gametes are produced. Haploid cells are cells that have half the number of chromosomes compared to other cells, which then fuse to form the diploid zygote. Meiosis takes place in two stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. We will learn more about meiosis in further videos. But for now, we are going to focus on meiosis 1, the stage in which chromosomal recombination takes place. Specifically in meiosis 1, in prophase 1, and in prophase 1, there is a stage called pachytene in which this recombination or crossover takes place. So, this is how a cell's DNA looks like in interface before it can undergo meiosis 1. Now, an important thing to remember here is that the chromosomes that I have drawn here are purely for the sake of understanding. They don't look like this in interface. In interface, the DNA is in the form of chromatin, like a tangled ball of yarn containing DNA, RNA and proteins. The chromosomes begin to condense to form the familiar structures that we know only during prophase, that too during late prophase. But for the sake of understanding, let's assume this is how they look like in interface before meiosis 1. So, a typical cell in your body will have 23 pairs of chromosomes, of which 22 pairs are called autosomes and one pair is known as the sex chromosome. So, each of those pairs of chromosomes are called homologous chromosomes. And they are called homologous chromosomes because they are similar in size, shape and in the gene sequence. The DNA sequence is similar and the position of the genes, say these white patches are genes, the position of these genes is the same in both chromosomes. So, such chromosomes are called homologous chromosomes. Uh, now, when you are born, you inherit one of these chromosomes from your father and one from your mother. So, for the sake of understanding, I have color coded it this way. Green is from father and pink is from mother. So, one chromosome say this is chromosome 1 out of 23 pairs you have 1 so this is the first pair so one in that pair is from your father and the other is from your mother but there is a slight difference in terms of how these genes are expressed say this white patch of gene codes for black hair this could be a gene that codes for hair color but brown hair color so, the trait is still the same, hair color, hair color, both places, but the trait being expressed is slightly different. This is black hair color and this is brown hair color. Such variations of the same genes are called alleles. So, these two are alleles, but for the same gene, say hair color. Now, what happens is these chromosomes undergo DNA replication in the S phase. Again, this is not how they look like in S phase. This is definitely not how they look like at the end of S phase. This is how they look like in prophase. So, what has happened here is that each of this chromosome that makes up this homologous pair has replicated. This is still one chromosome only, one and one forming one pair of homologous chromosomes. But now they are called one pair of replicated homologous chromosomes because they have there are two copies. This is one copy, this is one copy, this is one copy, this is one copy. For the longest time when I was studying biology, I could never understand what this homologous pair means. It's still one chromosome, one, one. But now these replicated homologous chromosomes are made up of sister chromatids. These two are the sister chromatids that are attached to each other at the centromere. Meiosis 1 results in the separation of these two homologous pairs. This goes to one cell and this goes to one cell. Meiosis 2 results in the separation of these sister chromatids. This splits and this splits. So, that's how haploid cells are formed. So, let's focus on this sister chromatids that have formed after DNA replication. This is what we have at the beginning of pachytene. We have one pair of replicated homologous chromosomes. So, while we have sister chromatids, we also have something called non-sister chromatids. This is very confusing sister, non-sister. Just remember it this way. If it's of the same color, then it's a sister chromatid. If it's of different colors, then they are non-sister chromatids. These non-sister chromatids still belong to this homologous pair, but they are not of the same 
parental chromosome this is you got from your father and this you got from your mother so these two are non sister chromatids of this homologous pair now what happens is these two chromosomes come together and form a structure called the tetrad tetra means four because there are four paths to this it's called a tetrad now what happens is these places that have the same genes here and here they sort of overlap with each other and form x shaped structures x shaped structures called chiasmata and it is at these x shaped structures where genes are literally exchanged the genes literally trade places with one another between these two non sister chromatids the genes are trading places the pink comes from this chromosome and attaches here and the green breaks away from here and attaches itself here so like this the genes are traded places when chromosomal recombination is taking place that's why it is called crossing over this gene literally crosses over from this chromatid to this chromatid so at the end of packetine you have something that looks like this the genes have traded places this is still from your father and this is still from your mother it was originally both green and both pink but now this green has parts of pink and the pink has parts of green which means that the alleles have traded places and these alleles that have traded places are found in recombinant chromosomes the ones that have the colors changed are called recombinant chromosomes and the ones that are still similar to the parental chromosomes they are called non recombinant chromosomes at the end of meiosis 1 the homologous chromosomes would be separated to two cells and this is how the cells would look like these cells would then go on to undergo meiosis 2 which would result in the formation of four haploid cells in meiosis 2 the sister chromatids of each homologous chromosome is separated which results in the formation of haploid gametes now that we have learnt about chromosomal recombination let's try to answer the question why is it important and why does it happen in the process of sexual reproduction say there is an organism that has something that makes it difficult to survive under certain extreme weather conditions if the genetic information from the parent is just like that copied and given to the offspring then the offspring could also find it difficult to survive under those weather conditions if the offspring's dna was slightly different from the parent's dna then that difference could probably give the offspring an advantage over the parents to survive during those weather conditions those differences or variations is what is introduced during chromosomal recombination when the alleles are exchanged differences or variations are introduced in the offspring that were not there in the parent organism the chromosome your father had was fully green the chromosome that your mom had was fully pink now the chromosome that you might get might have a bit of pink in it so this variation or difference is given to the offspring so that it can have a survival advantage over the parents that could be beneficial for the continued survival of the species and over time these small small changes in dna sequences or mutations that's what they're called they will accumulate and that would lead to evolution of the species and this happens over a course of millions of years so that's why chromosomal recombination is very important